so we still have him. Got him to eat a little food. We just the daytime is when they usually, you know, hide in the dark. So I'm gonna make him a little a little hut. Something for him to rest in. Um he seems very weak. Very light. He's actually adorable though, so but he's wanting to, you know, snuggle close to somebody with warmth. I'm guessing he didn't mean to be separated from his mother, but sometimes they fall off their backs and the mommy doesn't know. And they're on their own. So, see what happens next. So I brought him down to the water. This is where... When he's a big possum on his own, oh, this is where he will go to, oh, where's he gonna go? Oh my, oh, he's, well, this is where he'll go to, to, uh, get his own water and food. Okay. All right, I got him. I can't let him run away because... He tried to go in those bushes, and there's actually a snake over there right now. You can hear it. So the whole point of, you know, rehabilitation is doing the things, allowing them to do the things that they'll do when they're on their own. And so for him, he is a boy. It's a boy. I think I'm going to call him Odin. Um, he's got good instincts. But for him, he'll, you know, come down here to get water. He'll forage. He'll forage in the backyard. So he'll forage, and the whole point is to, you know, allow him to do things that he would do on his own. And so, and also, you know, you don't want to give him too much human contact. I'm only out here today to really help him see how he behaves. He's he's really smart. Um, I did have one possum who, well, actually, I had found two baby possums, and I'll show you guys videos of them soon. Um, I had found two of them, and possum get bandaid. Possum no, get bandaid. Possum don't need bandaid. I need a bandaid because. I fell on the cement trying to get him because I was worried he would run too fast away <laughs> and I need a band-aid so um, but I had two other possums I had two other possums and they were they were both babies much younger than this one um, should have never been on their own kind of like this one and nature works in a way where about 24% or 25% of nature lives. So an animal has four babies, only one will survive. And I mean, I've seen this with my rescue birds, with my rescue possums too. He's scared, a lot of noise. I'm going to get you out of the sun. I'm going to get him out of the sun. It's too much sun for him and too much going on. Um, but, but, um, one of the possums had hidden themselves very good under the leaves. Had it not been for my expertise in seeking, I would have never found him. Um, and the other possum was just laying out in the middle of everything and so sometimes sometimes they'll actually use their mouths to grip and the only reason why look we're going to the shade no jumping we're going to the shade the only reason why only reason why I'm holding him is because he doesn't have teeth yet really to bite so otherwise you would want to handle these animals with gloves but one was one possum was hiding under the leaves and the other possum was just out in the open which is how I was so easily able to find it 
and I uh, I took care of them for a long while one of them was very strong and I was able to set free and he went and maybe this is his baby and the other one developed a condition and he died in my hands it was really sad but that's nature for you um, same thing happened with some baby birds that I rescued only one was strong enough to live and had I not saved them all of them would have been dead so the baby bird died in my hands as well I've actually had a lot of animals die in my hands um, a couple weeks ago we were driving and we saw someone hit a duck and the duck was flailing around so I got out of the car and you know tried to help it but there was really nothing anyone could do as far as saving it it was badly injured and dying and so I just you know held it and it died not alone so sometimes that's all you can do is just be there and you can see his instincts are really good because even though he knows me any movement puts him on edge so I'm going to get him a dark space to rest hopefully he'll eat some food we'll see and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens next. Something else that is important, um, I guess for anyone who is considering rehabilitation or is in a situation where they are re trying to rehabilitate, something important to do is make sure you allow them to do the things that they would do naturally, you know? get his climbing and um, things like that so we're letting him climb up this tree not too far because we don't want anything to happen to him you know um, he'll probably be ready to go on his own maybe in a couple days I'm gonna see how he is in nature and he seems to have his skills pretty well set he can climb a tree very fast but the thing about letting him go up in these trees right now is he would be a snake meal because he's fast but he's not faster than a snake birds can fly away squirrels can jump he's at a disadvantage because he can only climb and at a slow rate you know he's fast for his age but come on. but he's still quite slow so letting him get his practice is good I think my dog is concerning him so yeah letting him climb letting him run letting him hide letting him forage you want to make sure you're keeping them doing what they would do naturally, you know. I'm just acting as a guardian, I suppose, for now. Um, someone said I should keep him, but you can't keep an animal like this because they belong in the wild. And I have a small child, and I don't know the first thing about domesticating a wild possum. I mean, I would imagine you just domesticate it like any other animals, but... I mean, they poop. I don't know if you teach it to go in the litter box. You teach it to go outside. I, I don't know. I know that they would prefer to be in the wild. And so I'm going to do my best to make sure he is fit and ready to go in the wild and be a strong possum. So there he is. Say bye, little guy.